There we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, this is another uh, beautiful uh, section of uh, the uh, Regency uh, Wine Nevada as well. I need to have a speaker view. Here we go. It's not me, it's Kendall. Kendall is here, get a review. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So this is obviously uh, welcome, welcome to our Regency Wine Nevada, uh, Las Vegas Regency Wine Nevada, Reno, and as well Hillside Wine and Spirit in California. I want to thank everyone to be a part of this event again. This is our monthly, uh, uh, obviously, uh, breakfast of the champion, the old champion, and uh, we're going to talk about today some beautiful wine. We have the pleasure today to uh, meet with uh, Jesus Fernandez. He's the owner, the winemaker, uh, the uh, Punctum, uh, Punctum Winery in Spain. We also have the chance to have someone really help us big time to put this program together. This is uh, Tish Health. Uh, Tish is the uh, national uh, salesperson for the uh, Sandalo Group. Uh, which is part of the uh, uh, group that we're working with from Spain. So I want to thank everyone to be part of it. You all are part of the industry. You know what we're doing here today. We're just going to have fun testing some wine, asking questions to find out more about the program. Uh, we're very pleased to have those wine now uh, in our portfolio. Uh, it took us a few months to put all that together for you, but I believe everybody got the samples. So I want to thank everyone to be part of this. So before I give the word to uh, obviously uh, Jesus Fernandez and Tish, I want to do the traditional. Uh, the traditional here at Hellside and Regency is to obviously uh, 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 cheers. So everybody, I uh, grab a glass of wine, which is the first wine, the twenty thousand linguas. So we're going to cheers to the industry, cheers to us. We are resilient and now that everything is opening. We're going to uh, make a lot of money, selling a lot of wine and sharing our passion to everyone. Salute to everyone. Thank you so much to be part of that. And thank you to uh, accept our invitation uh, for this breakfast of the champion. Here we go. Cheers. Here we go. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Mm. So uh, this morning, we have the pleasure to have Jesus Fernandez again. Jesus, I'm going to unmute you just to be sure that you can talk to everyone. Uh, so I just ask and request, here we go, you're right here. Jesus Fernandez, owner of Punctum Winery uh, in Spain. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much to accept our invitation. Uh, let us know who you are, introduce yourself if you may. Tell us uh, why you love those wines so much and uh, how you make them. So let's start now with obviously uh, where you're from and uh, where we're located right now in Spain. Uh, thank you, Bruno, for hosting me today. And um, thank you, Ray, for joining us uh, in this uh, tasting and introduction of our winery. Um, well, my name is Jesus Fernandez. I belong to the, to the family uh, to the Fernandez family that owns uh, the winery Dominion de Puntum and also uh, the vineyards around us. Uh, we are located in Spain, obviously, in, uh, in our uh, hometown Las Pedroñeras, which is located in Cuenca, which is a region in the mid-Spain uh, mid towards east. Um, we we are in the plateau, which is uh, which covers uh, like uh, sixty percent of Spain, and uh, we are uh, in a in a region with uh, different uh, wine regions within it, and uh, plenty of wine around. Uh, main wine region production uh, producing in Spain and also um, uh, at uh, uh, in meters uh, 500 meters above sea level uh, which I believe is like uh, about one, uh, 1,500 feet yeah probably. yeah something like that yeah um, well I mean we our hometown uh, is where 
where my family owned the, the vineyards for, for long, uh, for several generations. And uh, we started producing wine uh, over, over one, one century ago. Uh, it was that wine, that winery was a small winery uh, devoted to uh, deliver the wines to the local community. Uh, it was my grandpa grandparent who stopped uh, with the winery and started to, to, to continue, with the, continue with the wine growing, but started to deliver the, 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 the grapes to the, to the cop in the region uh, for, for several, for, for many years. And then it was uh, my generation together with my father who decided to come back into wine production Wine, uh, wine making, and um, it was uh, almost 20 years ago that we started our transformation into organic and the building of the of Dominio de Puntum as it is today. Uh, in Dominio de Puntum, we uh, pre-focus uh, purely in organic and biodynamic uh, production. Uh, for the last 15 years, we have been producing and marketing our wines around the world very successfully. We uh, produce and cover a wide range of wines from uh, local grapes such as Tempranillo, uh, Garnachas, Rosés and Verdejos to international grapes such as uh, Chardonnays uh, or Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, everything is uh, organically or organic grown. Everything is um, uh, comes from our state grown grapes, and um, part of it, uh, part of our production is also biodynamic certified. Beautiful. Now let's go back to uh, the size of your property. But before that, is uh, the region. A uh, few comments on this region. Not too many. Uh, we don't see too many wines in the U.S. Uh, from this region. And it's a very unknown underground region. Do you know, or can you have any explanation about that? Do you know why? Yeah. We are, yeah, we are in, uh, we are Pino de la Tierra de Castilla, uh, which is um, an appellation that covers a, a wide uh, region, but uh, with many different particularities. Because of the uh, size of the, of the region, you have uh, many different uh, characters between wines produced in Cuenca, for instance, which is our province, or in Ciudad Real, for instance, which is a province that lays uh, uh, like 200 miles from, from us. So we are within that map, we are uh, in Cuenca, you can see it there in the yeah, that one <laughs> there precisely. <laughs> um, Cuenca is in between Valencia, as you can see it, and, and Madrid. Um, we have um, different appellations of origin. You can see from starting from Madrid, you start to see the, the two different colors there. They are uh, two different wine appellations, the uh, Ucles, um, Mondejar, then uh, our region, and then uh, Manchuela and uh, Rivera del Júcar, which are the ones in green there. So all those appellations of origin lays in Cuenca, which is the which is our province. And uh, the the particularity of our of all our regions, I would say, is that we haven't focused on international markets for uh, for for I mean never. And and we have what we have been doing is uh, producing wines for the local community at the beginning, then for the national market in Spain. Uh, we are also a, a place uh, well known for, for um, very complex reds, and, um, but uh, with very few international uh, exposure. So it was uh, us together with some other wineries, uh, family wineries in, in, in the region that decided almost 20 years ago to start to promote uh, wines uh, of Cuenca uh, in, 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 other, in other, I mean, outside of Spain. Got it. So, the, the, so you have a, like a consortium, or do you have like a union of this region is getting more active in the market right now as far as marketing? Or are you doing all of those uh, marketing on your own? 
Both. We are. We have a very uh, particular focus in our in our particularities, which are as a company, which are to produce uh, all our wines from our state-grown grapes and uh, organic uh, um, biodynamic farming. Uh, but then also uh, different wineries in the region lately are uh, trying to, to, to join and to promote the region, or the different wine regions in our, in our province, uh, based in, in particularities also such as uh, Bobal, which is, uh, which is a local indigenous grape that you can mainly find in, in Cuenca and a little bit in Valencia too. And uh, we are trying to join and identify our particularities as a, as, a, as a wine region to try to also differentiate and, and create uh, our own personality. But as I said, um, uh, the, uh, those things or those act actions are, um, are carried, carried out by uh, different small wineries. Um, and it's more the strength uh, or the, the effort that put every winer in its own, in its own uh, market or potential markets than, than the real strength we have right now as a, as a, as a community. Got it. I think, uh, yeah, we, uh, we were very pleased to actually uh, meet with your winery because obviously we heard about this region and we know it's a lot of good juice coming from this region. Also doing our diligence and our research, we find out that this region was really focused on organic and biodynamic. And for the last 15, 20 years, you can see a dramatic change and improvement uh, the way that this region is making wine uh, with less production, higher quality. Um, so that's why I believe also that we we're very intriguing over to, uh, to bring over the intention of your winery and your wines. Uh, to the market. So very pleased with that. Now, your, the, the, the estates right now, you're working with what, 200 hectares? Yeah, I mean, just to, to, answer, to, to, to continue a little bit with what you were saying, it's true that uh, one of the things that help us uh, in order to refocus our, our region and to give us international, national and international exposure is the fact that we focus in organic and biodynamic uh, not only also not only our company but but the region too and it's because of our our um, our climate and our soil is very very uh, suitable for organic production to carry out organic production at a, at a high quality uh, uh, with, because we don't have uh, we don't have the issues that may happen in other in other in other regions with different climates so we have a particular competitive advantage and in our winery in our state, we have been uh, enhancing, focusing on enhancing that for the last 20 years. We, we have uh, 200, we, we own I'm gonna buy a couple um, herbs. Um, oh shit, what happened? Sorry, hold on one sec. Uh, mute people, I really need everybody to mute for a sec, thank you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so uh, our state is, to, uh, we own 200 uh, hectares. Uh, which is about uh, 400 acres of organic uh, production of wines. Uh, out of that, about half is biodynamic uh, um, uh, certified. Um, so um, in those uh, 200 hectares, uh, we have different uh, plots and different terroirs uh, all around the, the winery. And uh, in those, we uh, grow, uh, as I was saying before, uh, the different varietals where we focus. Particularly, uh, we uh, focus in um, reds in Tempranillo and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And in whites, uh, we focus in uh, Verdejo and, uh, and Chardonnay and lately uh, Sauvignon Blanc. We also have a growing production of, uh, of Rosés. Uh, uh, organic certified, also a uh, very pale rosé style as it is still in the market nowadays. And uh, then uh, we have also our own sparklings and recently we added a pet nut uh, uh, range. Everything organic uh, certified. Beautiful, beautiful. Um... 200 hectares to manage in biodynamic and organic growing. It's, it's, 
is definitely challenging in your uh, in your in your shoulder. Correct. I mean, it's not so easy to manage such a, a large not easy. property like that in a, in this tender. It's not easy, but at the same time, it is our competitive advantage. I mean, we have uh, a, as a as a company and as a family, we have a deep knowledge of organic production. Um, because of the time we have been doing it for long. Now we have been also certified organic uh, biodynamic uh, ten, uh, for the last 10 years. So we were one of the, I think we were the second uh, biodynamic winery in Spain, actually. And then, uh, but it, it's also true that our, our terroir and also the climate, particularly the climate that we enjoy in our region is, uh, offers a very good opportunity to 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 carry out uh, to carry farming um, with uh, with that organic and biodynamic uh, uh, focus, we have as terroir we have uh, almost I mean very 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 uh, uh, very small rainfall along the year. We have very uh, almost no rainfall uh, from uh, June till September. Which is when the harvest start, and uh, we, I mean, our land is so dry. Uh, I guess similar to some parts of California, not near the coast, but in but inland, um, our our land is so dry that we don't even have dew in the mornings in the plants. So that lack of humidity help us a lot in order to fight the the diseases that we that we may have as any as any winemaker. In the winery, in the vineyards, sorry, and also help us to fight the the the, the weeds and, and other and other plants that may grow. Uh, that, so in that way, we don't need to really to use any pesticides or chemicals. And at the same time, we are able to have a very healthy and uh, and, and high quality harvest uh, in a very consistent way. Because that that climate is what we enjoy every year. It's not it's not it's nothing particular for for a certain for a certain year. If you have a look at that and you go north to France uh, or to north of Italy or north of Spain, where where they have a, a, a more humid climates, uh, although they produce also organic wines there, but they they really struggle to to have a healthy. Uh, a healthy plant along the along the along the growing season, and to and to have a, a health a healthy uh, harvest. That's something that we that we that we don't that we have in a in a much better way because of our of our climate. So you definitely don't have mildew. You don't have this type of disease. Have, but already. very much, but much less affection than in other than in other places. Much okay. less. Got it. We, now. Um, we can I fight do. it. We can easily fight it with uh, with copper and sulfur, and uh, that we spray um, with that and the biodynamic uh, components and with the with the compost that we produce, we are able to to have a very you know to, to carry out a very a very average uh, and I mean a, a healthy um, harvest. Okay. When we say biodynamic, organic biodynamic, obviously you follow up as well the uh, moon calendar. Yeah, we we have we are organic certified. We were, we were first organic certified, um, and as you know, the there is a particularity in the states about the organic certified wines. Uh, in in I would say that in all markets in the world, but the states, when you produce a wine. Um, with our organic farming, then you call it organic wine. Now in the States, uh, you have a, a particular law where you have wine made with organic grapes and then you have organic wines. Uh, like the, the main differentiation or the, the only differentiation is that the, organ the certified organic wines in the States are those that uh, don't add any sulfites whatsoever. So in our case, we do produce uh, such a wine such as uh, Puntum Sinsulfitos that we can enjoy later. But uh, most of our wines, including Lovetia Tempranillo or um, or uh, Leguas, those are 
uh, called in the States wine made with organic grapes, because although it's organic farming, we do add sulfites, okay? That is a particularity that is in your market. In other markets, all those wines would be called organic, but is, that's, uh, that's something unique for, for you. Then uh, we have also the biodynamic certification. In the biodynamic certification, we started to work on that 10 years ago. What we do is not, we are not only organic, but also we uh, work with different um, procedures in order to increase the quality and to, uh, of, our, of our wines, mainly by enhancing the particularities of our terroir. Uh, we, um, we are uh, using our own composts that we, that we ferment in our, in, our side, in our place so that we don't we, we use the bacteria that are around the, um, and around the our own farm in order to, to, to ferment those compost. So when you spray them or you use them on the vineyards, the, you, don't, you are keeping your own uh, microfauna uh, and your particularities of the vineyard. We are uh, also using the different, um, different natural uh, fertilizers that we produce according to the biodynamic practices um, with different uh, herbs extract. extract. Uh, for instance, uh, we don't add when we want to add uh, iron to the to the to the soil. We don't we don't actually use the, the chemical component. What we do is to do a, a tea with a, with a plant rich in iron, and then we spray it on the on the on the plants or on the on the, on the soil. Then we also follow the moon cycle uh, in as much as we can when we do. Over pruning, or we do over over treatments. Uh, when you want to do a leaf treatment, it's better to do it uh, when when it's um, when the when it's a leaf day uh, because of because the influence of the moon. Uh, the shape is uh, when it's full moon. The shape is more on the on the aerial part of the plants because of the moon attraction and therefore uh, it's a better moment for doing your sprays on the, on the leaves. Meanwhile, if you want to do root treatments, what you want to do is to add something to the soil and then uh, you better do it uh, when, when it's uh, not full moon because in that way, uh, that moment, the shape is more on the, on the roots and then it will help in order to, to, to catch those uh, nutrients or, 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 or these or, or plant extract that we are adding. Very, very intriguing, and uh, it's 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 great to know a little bit more about your practices. Now, do you think your neighbor, the one and doesn't care about organic or biodynamic, do you think those people will they will produce more grapes, but maybe less quality? I mean, what do you see the difference between production of organic biodynamic to the crop to uh, someone doesn't use any of those techniques? There are many things to say about that because. You have um, you have many concepts uh, in uh, that um, uh, affect this. For instance, uh, the fact of uh, working in a, with organic uh, farming in general terms, what we are doing is is working in a very sustainable way. We are not adding any chemicals that are not natural in the environment, and therefore we are saving our uh, our aquifers, our subsoil water, which is the main water we have in our region for anything, for drinking, but also for, for farming, What's, what can, any, any kind of farming. We don't have big rivers at all, so all the water we have comes from wells. So we are saving that uh, for the future. We have also, by working in an organic uh, or a farming, what we do is to have more even harvests. We are not potentiating the plant um, by using those accelerators that are that may be used in, uh, with chemicals and therefore the plant grows healthier by itself. Uh, bear in mind that we are in a in a favorable place for for the plant to grow with uh, just with uh, with uh, with organic farming. That means that the plant is going to be stronger. The vineyard is going to be stronger uh, to fight any disease naturally. Because uh, because we haven't been using any any chemical in the past for for helping that, uh, we also obviously face uh, a smaller harvest because of the fact that we don't use uh, uh, like, let's say high nitrogen rich uh, fertilizers. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, the plant is not exhausted. 
because when everybody knows that when at any plant, any for instance the vineyards, when you have a year of a big harvest, then the next year is usually is going to be small harvest. Right. So, so if you don't um, use those uh, um, uh, those uh, accelerators such as the high nitrogen, high rich nitrogen, uh, high nitrogen rich uh, fertilizers then uh, you will have also more balanced harvest along the year and a longer uh, life of the, of the plant. Um, again, I mean, there are many, uh, many, many things to say about this. Uh, the truth, and that's my personal thinking, is that as long as we are able to do it, uh, as long as any farmer, doesn't matter if we are talking about, about wine, anything that we can do organic, in a in a in a good way, getting a better quality, not really affected in terms of the quality of the crop or the production because of the fact of being organic, uh, but delivering a richer, more natural flavors and products to the to the market. That's something that we that, that that's a big value that we add to the to the consumers, to the wine consumer, to the wine lover, also to the future generations of farmers, and also to the um, to the, to the community since we are saving the, the richness of our soil and the richness of our, of our under of our waterfall our water reservoirs under the soil to be to be able to use them in the future. We I guess you have the same issue but unfortunately in Spain we have some places where the, the waters under the soil are contaminated and they cannot be used for, for drinking for instance. And that's something that uh, we shall organic organic farming is solving for for good. Good. Well, I can see that you're very passionate about it, and I think that translates to the wine, especially uh, you understand. And I, I'm very pleased to see that uh, you're thinking about the future of the new next generation and thinking about the consistency of the quality and not just producing just to produce and over over producing uh, obviously just for an economical. Uh, situation. So that's why we, I believe, uh, um, uh, test your wine and we fell in love with what you were doing. So thank you to do that. I'm going to move on to uh, the next subject. Obviously, we talk a little bit about the, 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 we talk a lot about the vineyard, but I thought that was very important to, to mention and have you explain exactly your thought about that. Let's move to the uh, next, the first one that we're testing together. If you don't mind, we're going to have everybody, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure as right now, everybody did have a chance to test this uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful wine. Everybody has a label on the front of them. This is 20,000 Linguas. Uh, this is obviously a Nombre wine, uh, skin contact wine. We're going to talk about a little bit with you, if you don't mind, about the technique of vinification, exactly what we try to do here. Uh, on the chat box, we saw the different uh, uh, composition. Everybody has any question about the composition? So you can see then it says Chardonnay at 30%, 30% Viognier. 30% uh, of these very beautiful grapes, uh, originally, I believe, from your region, which is the Viora, correct? And the uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, what can you tell us very quickly about Viora? Because I think that's the unusual grape here that people should know about. And as well, let's talk about uh, maybe the way that you're making this wine. And at, after that, I'm going to ask someone to uh, make a little description of the wine. Go ahead, uh, Jesus. Certainly. Um, Viora is, um, is one of the indigenous grapes that we have in Spain. It's a white grape um, that uh, produces uh, a fairly good uh, acid, acidity in, uh, acid wines. Uh, and um, you can, I mean, and, and all vines particularly, they produce rich, uh, very complex, particularly full mouth um, uh, wines. Um, the, um, the way, I mean, the reason why we, we use uh, different, um, different grapes in, in our, in our uh, Ventamil Leguas is the fact that what we are looking for here is a balanced wine. We are looking for um, a wine that is going to have uh, a nice nose with, uh, with the orange wines aromas, but also fruitful aromas. We are all, we are looking for here for wine with a with a good palate structure uh, that will that is going to be added by one grape or the other one, and uh, and and that's something. And also even the color is affected by the by the by the grape. So 
uh, we think that the best way of uh, of producing these wines if if by the blend of the grapes that I, that we that we do and uh, regarding the wine making um, what we do is uh, to uh, to, to produce it as, a, as as you know, a, a, an orange wine is, a, is basically a, a white wine that is produced as a red. So it means that we are um, we are fermenting the wine with skins. Uh, the main particularity of, uh, of our of our production, and that's something that is done on purpose, is that we are not aging for very long with the skins. We are just fermented with, with fermenting with the skins for uh, during the fermentation time, that takes about two to three weeks. So we stay, I mean the, the wine stay on on its uh, on its uh, skins for uh, three weeks uh, about. After that time, uh, after that time, what we and after fermentation, what we do is to to separate the, the wine finally from from skins and and to continue the normal process of the of the production of the wine as a white wine. Now, uh, thus, that that way, that um, that uh, length of aging uh, with with the with the skins get, allow us two things. One is to extract uh, the tannins that we want to extract, not to extract, to, uh, not to over extract. We are, we, we, we are, with, we believe on, on orange wine as, uh, as a wine that should keep still uh, some freshness, keep still uh, some fruit, some fruitful aromas original from the, from the original um, uh, grapes and also we want it to be um, to be uh, to have a bolder mouth as as an, as an orange wine, but not too bold to keep it balanced. And that's why we we don't do long aging. If we do more extraction, we would get maybe more color, but then but but certainly we'll get more oxidation on the aromas and also um, bitter and more more bitterness on the palate. So uh, we believe on our on our on this style as a fresh orange wine, uh, very affordable for 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 every palate, uh, and that's uh, that's the reason why we we work that way. Nice, 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 nice. I think uh, everybody get the name of the twenty thousand and the other C. If you did uh, have a chance to uh, when you were a kid, uh, whatever, to uh, read the book or to watch the movie. <laughs> Uh, twenty thousand. I mean, twenty thousand under the sea. It's uh, Jules Verne, and it's definitely a wine that you need to think outside the box, like the movie. And that's, I believe, that's what this label. I believe it's so clever. Um, but uh, uh, let's pick up someone about this wine description. Uh, this is orange wine. This is the only orange wine we have in our book right now for very specific reason. I was trying to, we were trying to find the perfect orange wine that really fits your uh, demand and the market. And also a wine that is very uh, stable. I just want to insist on that. We double check on everything and this one is absolutely stable. And uh, we have no much variation between one glass to the other. And that's also um, uh, why this one, I believe, does have a, a market for it. Uh, who want to pick the lead? Who is in for the wine testing? Sarah, she's in. I am going to let her come in. And Hi. there we go. It's you, Sarah. Thank you so All much. All right. You see, I take my morning. notes every single time. Um, yeah. yeah. So the um, aromatics were super interesting. I mean, jumping out of the glass, I got a lot of floral. At first, um, sort of your fresh white gardenia, your fresh florals. Um, all the way to your dried reds, like reds and purples, almost perfumey. Um, a little bit of something green on the back, I, mint or eucalyptus, but very, very faint. Um, yeah, I got a little bit of uh, lemon oil, yellow apple, and some dusty stone. On the palate, it was a lot lighter than I expected with some um, medium acidity. And again, those yellow apple skins were confirmed on the palate more so um, with a decent finish. So it's been rather enjoyable. I've, I've liked it. Good, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. I just thank want you. to, before we get to the cheese pairing, because I know Diane is here and she's like anxious to tell us, and I know this one can pair with a lot of different cheese. Um, then anybody were exposed to an extent to orange wine in the past, and maybe someone can tell me 
what they see on this one, what they didn't see on the other one. What 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 was your first reaction on these orange one? And very intriguing about the feedback on that. So maybe if someone want to tell me their experience with orange one compared with this one. Anyone anyone who has a little comments on that? Anyone? Anyone? I just run wanted to find out about you guys. Tell me what you think. Karen, you like to uh, you like to take the leads most of the time, and I don't know how much you know about orange wine, Karen. But to, did you test orange wine in the past? And what do you think about this one? Well, my darling. So here's the thing: I did not chime in because honestly, this is the first orange wine I've ever tasted. Wow. So um, I've had a couple people in the store asking for orange wine over the last maybe year or so. Uh, and I don't have any to offer them. Um, so I didn't say one single word about it because I truly have no knowledge of orange wine. What did, what did you think about this one? Oh, I think the acid is really beautiful. I'm loving the flavors. You do get um, that crisp acidity and a little bit of pear. Uh, I'm tasting some... Um, a uh, little little smidge of grapefruit. Uh, it's just a really pretty pretty wine, easy to drink. I think the ton of acid will make it perfect for those hot hot days. So Great. I just don't know a lot about orange wine, but thanks well, for asking us. Now you know. Now you know a little bit more about it. I do. I do. I do. Thank you for educating us. It's great. That's great. That's great. Um, Diane. Good morning. Thank you so much to be here again today. So Diane is our, uh, she's queen. She's based <laughs> in L Las Vegas, Anderson. She's the, uh, she's tall and she's always right here with us. Uh, give us a little uh, food pairing as we are uh, doing that every day. And that's giving us such a great tips uh, to uh, give direction to our clients. So go ahead, Diane. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me again, Bruno and others. Um, yeah, um, Jesus, wonderful to meet you. This is really, really interesting. Um, I'm very, you know, the first thing I thought about when we tasted this was a Manchego, um, but mostly because the region specific, you know, we are talking about La Mancha. La Mancha is so, so notable for having Manchego, but a lot of people, specifically domestically, Manchego is one of the most well-known Spanish cheeses for good reason. Um, but I, I do want to introduce palettes to other sort of options with wine pairings. Um, so I actually did go domestic on this, so don't hate me. The other two are Spanish, I promise. Um, <laughs> I went domestic on this in kind of a weird way. So I actually chose to pair this with a baby Swiss. Um, and the reason here is because there is a lot of bright acidity in the wine a um, little bit of I detect a little bit of a saltiness but there are some florals and some some tart fruits in there and so I actually really felt like a baby Swiss would be a beautiful pairing this is holy cow um, it is pr domestically produced here uh, from the central coast uh, creamery in California I'm gonna move my camera down to my cheese there oh, um, so this one here is holy cow um, and domestically produced this is uh, considered a baby swiss so what actually happens in swiss styles is that you get if you ever had emmental yarlsberg you understand that there's a little bit of like a consistency here um, that is a little bit chewy well, in a baby Swiss, we actually find that the, the, the texture of the cheese is a little bit more uh, creamy and approachable versus a little bit more of that elasticity that you have in like a classic Emmental. But there is a classic Swiss nutty undertone and then a bright sweetness that happens in baby Swiss. So Proprionum shermani is the bacteria that actually blows out carbon dioxide and causes holes in Swiss cheese. And when it's a baby Swiss, it hasn't been ripened for that long. So the holes are very small, they're smattered, and then there are little pockets of salty sweetness that are uh, throughout. And that's actually just the trapped whey. So trapped liquid in there that doesn't get a chance to actually blow out and dry out into the cheese. So it produces this beautifully creamy texture, a lovely bright salinity, um, is really gonna highlight the, the beautiful aspects of the acidity of the wine um, and really bring the wine forward on the palate and have a classic Swiss nutty undertone throughout. Fantastic, what a great pairing always, oh, the great description. We all now, thank you again, Diane. We're going to talk about Tampanillo in a minute and we will let you uh, uh, present us two other domestic 
uh, not import Spanish. Spanish. We're going to talk about Spanish cheese next. Yeah, tempranillos right. and Spanish cheeses. Like we're gonna do it. No worries. Okay, great, perfect. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, very well. Uh, Jesus, very quickly. I mean, quickly, just as much as you can. But uh, can you give us a little bit more about tempranillo, the grape of tempranillo, especially especially in your region? Uh, can you uh, give us a little round about this, please? Yeah, I mean, tempranillo, as you know, is the maybe the the most planted uh, uh, red grape in Spain, originally uh, and mostly found in Spain. Um, we do find it in, in many different terroirs, in many different wine regions. That's why you have also different temp uh, expressions and different tempranillos. The tempranillo, as it expresses itself in our, in our, in our land and in our winery, is um, a medium body, uh, fresh, uh, red, red berry, uh, nose, um, uh, varietal. Uh, very fruitful, uh, not too tannic, and, uh, but typically um, very, uh, let's say, um, concentrated in terms of, of uh, flavors and alcohol. I mean, we typically range from 13.5 to 14.5 in our tempranillos. Um, in the north of Spain, in colder climates, maybe for instance in Rioja, you will find uh, maybe more that concentration in the in the highest quality uh, tempranillos. Meanwhile, you have a lot of tempranillos from Rioja on the 13 to 13.5. In our region, in our winery, that concentration is on, is in almost in all of them, and uh, we. Um, Obviously, it's organic farming, and uh, we uh, pressure ourselves to say, uh, to to work on uh, on on the expression of the varietal on each wine. We believe that uh, the the varietal tempranillo, uh, as it is, is uh, is very well expressed in in our wines, and 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 I think that uh, that the fact that it's also organic and therefore. Uh, low in sulfides, it helps also in, in, to express uh, particularly on the nose. Very well. Now tell me, we have two wines on the front of us. Uh, obviously, everybody has those two wines. We have the uh, La Botia uh, Tempranillo that we have here, and we also do have the Punctum uh, Sin Sulfat right here. So I would love people to uh, compare one to the other. And uh, can you please tell us, uh, Jesus, about the different uh, winemaking of this one, but also if they're coming from a younger vine, older vine, what, what is the difference between those two wines? And the people can understand what was the attempt here. Yeah, um, we have two different, uh, two completely different Chompranillos because uh, of the particularly, I mean, for two reasons. One is the, the plot. The plot is different. Uh, one comes from, uh, I mean, the, the, the age of the vines is similar. We are talking about 20 years old vines, average. Uh, but uh, in the case of Lovetia, uh, it's a young uh, and oaked uh, fresh Tempranillo. And uh, the plot is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, um, is, is one of the, is, is one of the plots that, uh, that is, uh, expressing a, a better uh, character of that fruitfulness uh, that you can find in, in the in the young wines. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the um, the Puntum Tempranillo is a Tempranillo that comes from uh, from a single plot where uh, we get uh, because of the soil uh, composition of that particular plot we get a, a, a more structure on the wines. Typically, uh, higher concentration, higher alcohol levels. We get also uh, maybe uh, more uh, bolder tempranillos, but uh, since the aim in the case of the puntum is to age it uh, for for a while on oak, uh, we don't care so much for the for the for the floral nose or the fruitful nose. We look better. To, for the structure. So in the case of Puntum, as I was saying, we aged it for four months on the oak, an American oak, by the way. 
and, uh, and then uh, the particularity of Puntum Tempranillo, apart from being organic uh, and biodynamic certified, uh, that single plot is biodynamic certified, uh, is the fact that we don't add any uh, sulfide whatsoever uh, to the grapes or to the wine during the wine making, making process. So uh, the sulfides contained are only the natural occurring sulfides uh, that, in, that is less than 10 parts per million. And, uh, and, there, uh, and therefore, uh, the, the, we are able to, to call it and to label it as, as uh, non-sulf... Uh, non-sulfites added wine, uh, wine without sulfites. Um, so uh, the particularity of these wines, again, is uh, it comes from a one of our uh, biodynamic plots, is uh, aged in oak, and uh, is also uh, sulfites, uh, non non-added sulfites. Sulfite free, got it, got it. Well, you can see uh, as everybody testing those two wines, uh, I'm going to obviously give the wall to someone. I hope then everybody did get a chance to test both of those wine next to each other. And maybe that's what I'm going to ask. And maybe someone can uh, give me or help me out to make a little descriptive what they define about the first one to the second one. So again, La Botella Tamplanillo and Oak uh, obviously uh, organic and biodynamic, and the other one will be the punctum sin sulfate, and that's going to be barrel age for four months on American oak. There are the difference on those two wines as far as wine making. Everybody hear that? Uh, is anybody can take the lead on that? Anybody want to give me a little descriptive on those two wines and what they define from one to the other? Who want to take the leads? The ladies are always up to it. Maybe we can take uh, take one of the guy. Hello, who want to take the leads? I don't see anyone. You know how good I am. I'm going to pick someone. And uh, who else? Who else? Robert, are you up to it? Maybe. It's up to you, buddy. Do you want to do it? All right, I think. Can you hear me now? Yeah, Robert. Okay. Uh, good morning. Cool. Thank you to be here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. So no the uh, let me just revisit the other bit here. Uh, uh, the thing is, um, um, this is more of a. Uh, it's very fresh, dark, darker. I would say uh, fresher fruit. Yeah. Um, and it, de it definitely doesn't have as much oak as the uh, the punctum. Yeah. Because the punctum is very pungent when it comes to the uh, oak presence on it. Yeah, and then a lot more dark fruit. I mean, you're getting blackberry. Um, the tannin is a lot more uh, pronounced. Uh, that's about all I got. <laughs> okay, great. Hey, Aaron, what did you think about those two ones, buddy? Uh, do, you, do you see the difference? Uh, what, do you think it's a true representation of Tampanillo in your sense? Uh, what do you think? Good morning, Aaron. Here we go. You're here. You're live, buddy. Thank uh, you to be here. On the Lobetia, uh, I do get a lot of the red fruit off of it. Some plum, cherry. Uh, I do feel like they are good expressions of Tempranillo. Uh, I haven't gotten to the second one yet. I just poured it just now. So I'm just, I had the wines in the refrigerator. So they're a little bit cool still. So why don't you just hold your thought. I'm going to give the word to uh, Diane to give us the little uh, cheese presentation. And then I will come back to you to uh, find out what you think about this wine. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Diane, you're on. Hi. <laughs> oh, I surprised you again, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to jump up and deal with something in the shop. Uh, sorry. All that. right, sorry. Go <laughs> no, you're good. I'm, I have really, really loved um, this Tempranillo. I love that it's just so easily drinkable. Um, very beautiful, very light, very red-fruited. Really a lot of fun. Um, I actually put this... Um, I switched up my pairings at the last minute because I do that sometimes. Um, I do that but too, I, don't actually, worry. <laughs> I chose the smoke and goat here. So um, when I think of all these like red fruited notes, I really, I really enjoy goat milk cheeses and Spain is just so good at goat cheese, honestly. Um, they really know what they're doing. Milk composition there is beautiful. Um, so we did smoke and goat with this one. Um, this is 
what a beautiful pairing this is. It, it really brings all of the red fruit just beautifully forward on the palate. Um, Smoke and Goat is from the Canary Islands in Spain. Uh, the milk composition of the goats there is actually very ideal for cheese making. So you get this beautifully creamy texture, lovely tart brightness uh, with a little bit of citrus from the goat's milk. And then there's a light intentional smoking here. What actually happens when you combine the two is that the, the red fruited notes come very forward on the palate. There's a hint of smokiness on the finish that's really just a beautiful play together. Um, so I feel like the two just sort of dance around as a